Hi, writers. You ready? One, two, three, four. All right. So you have learned so much already about poetry. And I think today you're probably ready for some more sophisticated ideas about poetry. So we're going to try those out today. So first I wanted to go over and talk about how much you've already been learning about poetry. You know how to take a big feeling and that's what you're going to write about, right? With a small moment. We're experimenting with line breaks. We're deciding on moods. We're using comparative language. So all of those things that you're already doing. So we're going to hold on to those things. And today, what I wanted you to do was I wanted you to kind of hold on to a new idea for a poem you might have and just kind of keep it close because we're going to need it later today. All right. So hold on to that idea and I'm going to tell you a little story. So every summer, I like to go to the beach and while I'm there, I like to look for shells in the sand and I like to collect them. And so I take them home and I wash them off and then I decide what I'm going to do with them. And every year it kind of seems to be something different. So one year I drilled little holes and I strung them on a necklace. Another year I got some googly eyes and some pom-poms and I turned them into little creatures. Another year I just took them and I had a glass jar and I put them in there as a decoration. So there was a lot of different things that I could do. So the reason I told you this story is because the shells are like those little ideas we have for our poems, right? The little ideas we have that we're going to write about. And the necklace, the little creatures, the decorations, those are all different things that I could do with my ideas, okay? So what poets do is they try different shapes for their poems and the fancy word they use is structures. So here is what I wanted to teach you today. So good writers or poets, right, when they're going to write a poem, they experiment with different types of structures. And the way they do this is they read different poems that authors have already written and they kind of look at what the structure is and then they can try those structures on for size and see, do they fit their ideas? Do they like it that way? And if not, they try a different structure. So let me show you what I mean. All right, so here is a poem by Amy Ludwig Van Deerwater. She wrote one called Maples in October. They rustle to each other. I think today's the day. Wind is getting colder. Geese are on their way. Oak is throwing acorns. It's time to go ahead. I think today's the day. Let's change our leaves to red. Hmm. Okay, so I think what's going on here is I'm seeing two trees and they're talking to each other, but she says they rustle to each other, which is great, right? They rustle to each other instead of they talk to each other. So maples are a type of tree and in October their leaves change and this is really cute to think of trees that talk to each other and they think, okay, today's the day, let's change our leaves to red. And do you see how she did it? So here's one talking tree here and then the other tree is talking and their lines are indented. So that's really cool. So here's one person or tree saying, I think today's the day and the other one says, wind is getting colder. Geese are on their way. Oak is throwing acorns. It's time to go ahead. I think today's the day. Let's change our leaves to red. So this is a structure that is called a conversation poem. And it's a conversation between two people or two things, depending on what your topic is. So that's one type of structure that you could try on in your poetry today. Here's another one. This is called Destiny by Christine O'Connell George. And it says, some trees will become grandfather clocks, carousel horses, grand pianos, 
podiums or front porches, totem poles or cathedral doors, others, pencils, toothpicks, or matches. So the destiny, the destiny of a tree, I'm thinking. And she kind of makes, what you call that? A list. She's making a list of all the things that trees can become. And I like how she uses capital letters on all of these first things that are really important, right? Cathedral door is really important. Carousel horses are really important. Grand pianos, my goodness. And then these are all lowercase. I guess trees can also become pencils, toothpicks, or matches. All kinds of things that you have a, a million of, right? So this type of structure is a list poem. So that's another structure you could try on today. So I will put both of these poems in the resources, um, probably in materials or maybe in writing. Um, you can hunt around for them <laughs> on our Google Classroom and you can refer to these. And um, that's what good poets do is they kind of look at some examples before they start writing. So I hope you've been holding on to your ideas, right? So my idea for today was making chili with my sister. So I'm going to go to my poetry book and I'm gonna write chili hmm and I make this with my sister so I'm thinking do I want to try the list structure or do I want to try the conversation one hmm well there's two of us I guess I guess we could have a conversation about it so let's see um, I could say, I'll read the recipe. And she could say, I'll open the cans. And then I could say back, don't forget the garlic. Best part. Hmm, so I can try this on for size and finish my poem and see if I like the conversation structure. And then I could even try my poem again, trying the list structure, and maybe that would be better. So sometimes we try it on and it just doesn't work. And sometimes we try it on and it's perfect. All right, so I want you to try either conversation or list poetry today in your own poems. Have fun. Bye.